Welcome back to Dial H for HeroClix. This is episode 267. I am your host, Chris Britton, so let's go. Dial H for HeroClix is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all of the latest HeroClix singles and sealed products. So check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Joining me again in the studio this week is my sexy ranch hand co-host, Calder Ness. What's going on, Calder? Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. And we have a returning guest as well, our man from Finland. Uh, that is none other than Tiemu. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Gl glad to be back here. Yeah, we're glad to have you back. We've got uh, we've got quite a show. Uh, we don't have a lot of news, but we got quite a few segments to get through today, tonight. It's weird because it's like two o'clock in the afternoon for us, but you know, Tim is in Finland, so we've got a time difference. So we're recording early. Yeah. What time is it there? Uh, it's a bit past nine. Past nine p.m. All right. Well. Yeah. Here on Dial H, we like to typically start us off with what made us happy this week. Uh, Tim, would you like to start us off? Uh, yeah. The thing that made me happy this this week is uh, I'm gonna get a bit just a little bit mushy here, but uh, it's my son, yeah. my uh, my pr pride and joy. Uh, he's learning new things every day and uh, keeping me awake at ungodly hours during the night because he doesn't sleep. <laughs> but you know, you take the good with the bad. How old I is mean, he? I mean, the now? bad with the good. He's uh, three months. Whoa, three months. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's that's cool though. That's fine. You can totally get mushy on here. Usually every every time that I beat Calder in Bad Samaritan, he just cries. Not anyway. true. Not uh, true. Uh, <laughs> that's not that does not happen. That's not. Uh, whatever. All right. Well, that is really cool. Uh, let's Calder. What made you happy this week? Uh, we had our first month of X Men Regenesis. That was great. Wolverine uh, made it. Uh, so it wasn't what made me happy this week, so I'm going to skip over that. He was just terrifying. Um, but we did uh, South Dakota's very first WKO, and I was really happy with that. Made it top eight. Got beat out in top eight uh, by one of the teams that beat me in Swiss. But that's okay. Got to see all my good friends there. Had to have a great time playing Heroclix. The dupe Heroclix. Yeah, Chris wasn't a believer when I said how good dupe was. Uh, dupe, after some damage already did, so like, Kovic already took like two damage, whatever. Kovic's pretty tough to take down. Pretty tough cookie to crack. Dupe rammed. Rolled a five, and then one shot the rest of that Kovic, and I was like, yeah, this is why dude's here. Motorcycles, nice. baby. There were no really cool, like, tiger kills. I was a little bummed about that. I was, I tried to have a tiger charge, and, um, what was it? <laughs> he was gonna kill a Unseen, and it just didn't happen. Uh, I wanted him to roll real high on Blaze, and it's, it's a lot to ask of a tiger. Um, but darn it, I thought he could do it. But I, I seriously love my dupe X-Men squad. I'm gonna keep toying with it and play it again, but that's what made me happy this week. The X Squad. The X Squad. <laughs> With Doom. Uh, you know, that's actually a precursor to this week's Community Tuesdays question, that dupe. So we will get into that later. What made me happy this week was uh, I'm, I'm still basically on vacation for one more week but uh, before I leave. But this week has just been so relaxing and I can do whatever I want. So I, I've taken a lot of time. I've been working out like crazy. But other than that, cause that's, not, that's actually stuff I need to do. What I've been doing for fun is reading a lot. So I've gotten to read a lot of comic books this last week that include, I read Deadpool vs. Punisher, which was actually really good. Uh, I'm not a huge Deadpool fan, but it was actually still pretty good. Uh, Squirrel Girl, I read a bunch of Squirrel Girl. That, like, 2017 run of Squirrel Girl is fantastic. And oh, then, I loved it. Uh, the hmm. Spider-Man 2099 run by Peter David that just ended, like, last year. Man, Peter David is such a good writer. I really... He makes me love Spider-Man 2099, and I was sitting there thinking, I'm like, man, I wish Spider-Man 2099 would, like, be an Avenger. But at this point, there's, he's, he probably will, because, like, everybody in the Marvel Universe is an Avenger. <laughs> so that, that was cool. But um, also, yeah, just a lot of working out. And uh, I've been killing it on my four-mile run, so that's, that's making me happy. That, that, that's good stuff. And then just spending a lot of time with my wife before I leave. That's what made me happy. Well, uh, we are here to talk about the game of Hero Clicks, and in the news section, we typically uh, we we have a news intro, but Calder wanted me to play a different uh, intro this week that was brought to us by one of our listeners. So here you go. 
Like my good friend Dio Brando just said, the only thing that happened this week was news about Heroclix World Championship updates. So we finally, about two months out, we finally have a spot where it's going to be at in Tennessee. We're going to Graceland, ladies and gentlemen. So Friday, September 6th through Sunday, September 8th, in the Graceland Exposition Center for the 2019 World Championships for Heroclix, Dice Masters, Star Trek, and Attack Wing. In addition to competing for the title of World Championship and Heroclix Team World Championship, players and attendees will be able to purchase the Heroclix Con exclusives, as well as Battle Royales and other side events to win convention exclusives and prizes. Free entry, I read this, free entry into the exhibits in the Graceland Ex Exhibition Center. They are Muhammad Ali, Greatest of All Time, National Geographic, Earth Explorers, A Century of the American Motorcycle. So if you want to take a break from Heroclix and do something else while you're there, then there you go. So here's some more information. Sorry, what's up? Is, is this a little weird to anyone else? It's like, yeah, yeah, hero clicks are cool and all, but Muhammad Ali, greatest of all time attraction. Why don't we it's go greatest back? of all time. <laughs> Let's do it. I mean, it ties into the Superman, Muhammad Ali. That's scene. true. That's true. That's the only one, though, because we also have a century of the American motorcycle. I mean, hey, that's a motorcycle. Yes. Right, come on. Yeah, I, I, yeah. There it is. I can spin all this somehow. We're just stretching things at this point, but go on. Yeah. Go on. Okay, so if you are traveling to the event, there's a lot of uh, kind of things about what's going to be staying there. So basically, it's whatever a night, $119. Four people can be in the room. The room block is available for a limited time. First come, first serve. Only one room, all right, with this, can be served per registrant. So, blah, 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 for all the recommendations. Here's kind of the cool thing about if you get a Heroclix Worlds Championship TCB, so Tour Clicks Battle Royale package. So if you, if you get a room and you get this package, you also get 2019 Elvis Experience Tour Ticket, including... The airplanes. I don't know what it means, including the airplanes, but maybe you get to go do something. You get one random convention exclusive Heroclix figure, and you get a free entry into one Heroclix Battle Royale, which is pretty neat. So that is going to be 49 uh, per person, up to four person per room. So they can each get a random Heroclix, all this cool stuff. It's really, it's really cool. And blah, blah, blah. It gives them the block code. And then, of course, there's their fan appreciation event. Fan appreciation is going to be on Saturday. Sorry, Friday at 8 p.m. September 6th in the Graceland uh, Center. Guys, I just love saying Graceland. I'm just, it's so so hilarious. Uh, so it's going to be for late 2019, early 2020. So I assume we're going to see more previews for sets that people care about, like Captain America and the Avengers. Some previews for sets no one cares about, like Justice League Unlimited. I feel like that. <laughs> yeah, hold on. You're <laughs> so off base right now, but go ahead. <laughs> okay. All right. So... There's a whole bunch of travel planning notes. Go to their website and check that out. Now, there's one thing I want to read, and this is their, their attire thing. So besides parking, hotel parking, blah, 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 tour package, all that stuff's great. Go to the website. We'll have a link to it. Check it out. There's this very special note. Please note, we must request that the name, image, and or likeness of Elvis Presley not be used without express permission from Graceland. Improper references pertaining to Elvis are not allowed on Graceland property in any context. Elvis Presley Enterprises would like to thank you for your consideration in this matter. Wiz Kids is looking forward to a great World Championships weekend and ask that all guests and players comply with Graceland policies. WizKids and Graceland reserve the right to refuse entry to the event and or property to any player or attendee on the case-by-case -case basis. The determination of WizKids and or Graceland staff shall be final. As always, the Heroclix team names are inappropriate. They will not be accepted. So don't dress up as Elvis. Don't go hunk a hunk a burn a blow. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. You, you can still kind of... Get away with a little, like a little bit of that, right? Yeah, like, yeah, you should be able to get away with a little bit. It seems to of, me like they're, they're just, like don't badmouth Elvis, but at basically. this point in history, I feel like it's probably pretty easy to not badmouth Elvis. It's not like he's exactly a controversial figure. Not right now, anyway. <laughs> yeah, not anymore. <laughs> at, at one point, maybe. But I don't like the way he moves his hips. It's not <laughs> Anyways, so yeah, so that's really cool. Also, you can bring a Sharpie, and you can sign the famous Graceland uh, Mall. Or what mall? Wall. You can sign their Wall of Fame thing. So that is all the World Championship news. It's it's great. It's really cool. We finally have not only a venue, but also a place to stay, all kind of wrapped into one. So it's it's really awesome. It just took them a little bit of time to finally make the full announcement. But that was pretty much it for news this week. 
Okay. Well, the, I have a question, and this has nothing yeah. to do with really that, because that was pretty straightforward. And we will link that in the podcast show notes. Uh, TM, it was Elvis Presley a big part of uh, Finnish culture <laughs> ever? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he, he, he had his music. but Okay, all right. Well, that's all we needed to know about that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, moving on, we do have two segments that we wanted to do. Uh, one is actually a fan favorite that we are going to return to, and that is called Casual Comparisons. Keep your distance, though, Chewy. But don't look like you're trying to keep your distance. I don't know. Fly casual. All right, so if this is the first time you've ever heard of Casual Comparisons, what this segment is is where we, each of us, have chosen a care, a Heroclix figure based off of a character that we typically let our guests come on and choose what the character is going to be, and that is the 616 Universe Hank McCoy Beast. So each one of us has chosen a figure that represents that character, and we're going to talk about them and kind of parse out why we like uh, Beast as a character and which Heroclix figure embodies that character the most to each of us. Then we're going to vote on it at the end of it and kind of get what the official Dial H for Heroclix version of that character is. So, uh, Calder, would you like to tell us which figure, uh, which Beast figure you chose to talk about and why this figure embodies Beast to you? Go. Yes, absolutely. So I chose the Wolverine and the X-Men 062. It's the team base uh, beast. Uh, the reason I like him is, well, number one, uh, the name of his improved movement is Oh My Stars and Garters, <laughs> which, I, which I absolutely love. Um, so besides having them cool, like, acrobatics improved movement, uh, he has a special defense power with the flying furball. I just like the names of his powers. He also has brains or brute force, which he can choose close combat expert or outwit which is really cool, and that pairs really well with his sidestep top dial. And he just, he kind of like waits, he doesn't know if he's going to go full beast, or if he's going to like be patient, because he just has sidestep and those special powers just to sort of, you know, do whatever. So he's kind of slow to get in there. And then later in the dial, he's like, boom, all right, charge, blades, battle fury, like, let's do it. It's called beast on people. He also has Avengers Defenders Sword, Scientist, and X-Men, which I think is a really good spread of keywords for this beast. And this is, uh... Kind of a classic, okay, I'm not, that's a lie, it's not a classic beast at all. This is the full uh, animal face, I don't know what you want to call him, beast with a speedo. So it's kind of like Civil War era, like around that time, beast. So I always kind of... I think it's earlier, actually. I think it's is it earlier? The, okay. The Jim Lee so run of, of the beast. Okay. That's kind of what it looks like to me. So yeah. yeah so like 90s era beast. Yeah, it's like 90s, sort of the 90s era beast. And, yeah, I, I really like this piece. The only thing that's, like, missing for me is the like, no West Coast Avengers keyword that's kind of already been taken away, like, out of the game for so long. So, But I really like this piece. I like the names of his special powers. That's, like, what really, like, gives it to me. I love, like, the way his dial flows, you know. So that's that's why I kind of chose this piece. He does have some amazingly named powers. Uh, well, powers and you got your improved movement, so that's yeah, that's good, that's good stuff. The, the oh my stars and garters being beasts catchphrase in the comic. Yeah, right? exactly. Oh, so I love yeah. it. Classic. Uh, okay, well we will move on to Tiemu. Which beast did you choose? I chose the Xavier School zero zero three common beast, uh, the X Factor one. Uh, he's um, he has the X Factor trait and uh, the speed power. Bouncing Beast gives him Leap Climb, gives him a kind of a pseudo charge, and uh, really he does everything that I want. I'm looking for from a Beast in a kind of a budget friendly package. Uh, he he leaps, he outwits, he super senses, and he kicks re uh, reasonable ass while he does it. <laughs> <laughs> so why uh, I guess. My question is, why do you like the Beast before he altered into the Blue Beast? Um, I don't, like, um, yeah, Hank McCoy has always been, he's, he's, like, first off, he's my favorite X-Men, bar none, except maybe Colossus, but certain depict, earlier depictions of Colossus. But uh, Hank is just, uh, like, the, the scientist, uh, he is... At this point, he is one of the, the older uh, X-Men characters that hasn't been a le team leader, 
because he's always kind of the support guy, and that's kind of something that I appreciate in a way. Also, so he, because uh, he's a more of a thinker than a center stage person. He's a okay. support. Mm. Okay. Well, I'm actually I'm gonna I'm gonna one up you on what you just said right there, where uh, he's the thinker, because I'm gonna talk about the zero fifty from the Uncanny X Men set Beast. And for many, many reasons, this is the super rare 100 points. Now, this is 40 points more expensive than the one that you chose, and it kind of depends, you know, how much do you like the character of Beast? Are you only willing to put in 60 points for the character, or are you willing to put in a full 100 points for the character? Um, but Beast, we're starting off with the Avengers, Defenders, Sword, Scientist, X-Factor, and X-Men keyword, and that is just about every team that he has ever been on. <laughs> So that right there, I'm like, yes. The only thing I don't like about this one is he doesn't actually have the X-Men team ability. And I believe the other two do. Uh, 62 does. Yeah, they and, do. Oh, no, 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 no. The 003 does not. Yeah, X-Factor 1 does X-Factor, yeah. Uh, but he, they don't have the team ability. Or he doesn't have yeah. the team ability. So two out of the three doesn't. And he's always been, like, historically an X-Men. But what do we got for 100 points? Well, uh, we have improved movement which gives him, ignores elevated terrain, ignores hindering terrain because it's listed as acrobatic. Makes sense. He's very uh, acrobatic and dexterous. Uh, we don't have any special combat symbols, but we do have charge with 9 speed, 11 attack with blades. Now, blades is awesome on a, on a beast because it makes sense, but you wouldn't have blades on the old beasts, you know, before he altered into his blue form. Um, a fine, a fine form indeed, which is his defense power. gives him combat reflexes, super senses, and toughness. Uh, I, I was debating in my head, like, is Beast the type of character that would deserve willpower? And I don't think that he should probably have willpower, so for a 100-point character, it kind of makes sense that he doesn't have it. But to go back to what we were talking about a minute ago, about how intelligent he was, and what is the epitome of Beast to me, is how intelligent Hank McCoy is. And he, in, at least in the Marvel little sub-mythos that they've got going on, he is one of, if not the most intelligent, one of the X-Men. And this particular power, which he does have on top dial, and, well, it clicks one and two. Uh, Beast can use Outwit. When he does, instead of targeting one character within range and line of fire, he may char choose to target every opposing character within four squares and choose a power on each of them to counter. I think that is insanely awesome. Uh... Even if you don't want to run him at the 100-point line, you can run him at a 60-point line, uh, and he will have just typical outwit on his top dial, and he'll still have that special defensive power. But to me, there's just a couple of things that kind of Beast has to do. He has to bound over everything, so it has to have improved movement or leap and climb. He has to be super intelligent, so he has to have outwit, but that's like a super outwit, which I thought was really, really good. And then... Lastly, he's got to transition into basically beast mode when <laughs> he, he can't be the, the smart guy the whole time. He's got to charge in and start doing damage eventually as well. And that's kind of what this one does look like. At the very end of his dial, he gets a uh, close combat expert for the last three clicks with three printed damage on three of those clicks. It's pretty good. So hopefully maybe I, uh, I sold you guys on that mm -hmm. one. But let's, let's get into the voting section of what you think is the, the ideal beast. Tiamia, what is your vote? Uh, you sold me. Uh, I, I gotta go with uh, Uncanny X-Men Super Rare. Yes! <laughs> Calder. I didn't want him to sell me. Like, that's the problem. Like, I really didn't <laughs> want him to sell me on it, but I, I played this beast. I really like this beast. I played against this beast. And I, I kind of begrudgingly, I suppose, I will vote for Chris's pick, the Uncanny X-Men 050 Beast. Oh, I thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I'm. This is totally me being selfish. I'm voting for my own. <laughs> no. <laughs> when, this, when this piece actually came out, I was like, they did it. They finally nailed Beast. He's so good. Like, and his stats are amazing. On top dial, he has, like, 20 defense from close combat. Like, yeah. <laughs> That's so dumb for Beast, but it makes a lot of sense. And uh, I have gotten to use him in a few games, and that that power, the outwit, the super outwit, is so insanely stupid. <laughs> like, you just run him up, and you're like, I'm outwitting that, 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 and that, because I can. So, all right, you heard it here, the official 
Dynamics for Heroclix, Beast, uh, 616 Hank McCoy is going to be 050 from the Uncanny X-Men set. It is decided. You have, it is decided. Get it, guy! <laughs> okay, we'll move on to uh, probably the most favorite of all of the segments in this show for most people is going to be Bad Samaritan. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to let you know, Calder, that there's totally a theme this week. I'm going to let oh, you know yeah. now. And okay. <laughs> this, this theme was not my idea. It was actually Superfan Christian Bogan's idea. So you mm. can't really blame me. Mm. So now I know who to point gonna... my anger towards. Right? <laughs> yeah, you know who to put it towards. So here's how Bad Samaritan is played. I have chosen three modern age figures in the game of Hero Clicks. I have a list of clues in front of me. Calder has a random number generator. He's going to generate a number, and I'm going to give them the associated clue with that number. They're going to get a guess, one guess per round, three rounds per figure, and if at the end of three rounds they guessed it, they get a point. Uh, if they didn't guess it, I get a point. So are you guys ready to play? Yes. All right. Calder, generate that first number. Here we go. What's it going to be? Number eight. Number eight is improved movement or targeting. That is a big old negative. There is no improved movement or targeting. Uh, of course. And while you are thinking of a character that does not have improved movement or targeting for your guys' guesses, I'm going to let you guys know out there in podcast land that a right answer will sound like this. A wrong answer will sound like this. And if you would like to play along, just pause the podcast, see if you can come up with a guess, and press play when you've got a good answer which will most certainly be better than Calder's answers so <laughs> okay sure yeah that didn't hurt, <laughs> hurt at all. so, all right, so what, you, what you got rotation rotation has happened since the recording so Chris can only choose figures and I hope he did this from Elseworlds to now that's what's legal currently right. Elseworlds to now let me see yes check check and check all right. Fine, hmm. really. Took a long wrong. pause there in the last one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I'm moving the order now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No improvement retarding. Well, I'm just going to go ahead and throw out the Iron Patriot. Iron Patriot. Locked in from Calder. Mr. TMU. Uh, I'll, I'll go Iron Man. Oh, locking it down with Iron Man. All right. Survey says we'll move on to clue number dose. So the theme might not be Iron People. That's the same. <laughs> uh, number two. Number two is point value. Uh, the point value is 75 points. That's a considerable okay. number. All right. That's not a bad clue. No, oh, it's pretty good. That's good. Hmm? 75 points, this guy. Uh, uh, Calder, you know the, uh, Steve Rogers better than me, but I think the Battle World one had Captain America. Uh, the Captain yeah, America. So had all the Captain points in Battle World were 75 points. Yeah. Um, only the I want to say only the 001 had improved movement or targeting. I think the rest did not. I so do a have, lot of yeah. uh, switching focus characters that actually are 75 points. Uh, so Captain America 75 points, and then... Deadpool's also 75 points. Deadpool 75, so Superman is 90, Batman is 60. I think it might just be Cap and Deadpool that are... Set, that are oh, the new Elektra is 75 points. So yeah, I'd say a good majority sure, of them. Sure, sure. Uh, so Deadpool, Deadpool like, rotated like, out, though. He did, that is correct. Yeah, it did. I don't feel like Elektra has... The, Waste a guess yeah. on something that rotated out. And I feel like Electra has improved movement. Like, it, on most of them? Uh, for sure. Not on her first one. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, hmm. on her second one, she had improved targeting. She could shoot while based. And then on her third one, I don't remember. I never played that one. Hmm. So, ad additional rule out there if Calder hypothetically says Captain America, it will cover all pieces named Captain America as a correct answer. Same with Electra if TMU chooses Electra. Uh, just thinking about characters that are 75 points, though, I think I'm going to go with Flex Metallo. Flex Metallo locked in. He's the hero <laughs> of the beach, as we all know. 
Damn. Uh, I'll go with Electra. Uh, Electra, locked in with Electra. Survey says. <laughs> Clue number three. All right, here we go. We need a good one. Number 18. Number 18 is a free play, so my contestants can choose anything that they would like to know about this character, like opening damage power or generic <laughs> keyword. Those are definitely the ones we want. Uh, do you <laughs> want to go, like, set or maybe a trait or something, Tiamu? Um, five points, no, uh, no improved movement or targeting. I think maybe set would narrow it down. All right, set sounds good. We'll go set. All right. Let's we'll see, what is the name of the set? It is Star Trek Hero Clicks Away Team, the original Jeez. series. <sighs> oh, <laughs> very cool. Okay, what a guy. What a good guy. <laughs> cool. I didn't right. choose this theme. <laughs> the, the theme chose you. All right, Christian Bogan, yeah. we're taking the super fan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to have course after this. <laughs> All right, so, All right. so recap, right. you have uh, a character from Star Trek, the original series. They are 75 points and they do not have any improved movement or targeting. What is that in that set that is like a, that ex expensive beef? Yeah, that's what I thought, too. Like, 75 is actually pretty beefy uh, for that set. I mean, I know Horda was, like, 100 points. There was and Rock. Or Kirk is 100 points. 100, yeah, both the titles are. The Chase Kirk and the Chase Sulu are both 50. And then there are some other figures in that set that probably exist. Um, man... Um, let's, oh, oh. Can we do it, ladies and gentlemen? Can I have my third sleep? Don't want to. <laughs> sure. Ah. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Star Trek, Star Trek, Star Trek, Star Trek. What, I what is think Star Trek? that Spock is 75 points, and he probably doesn't have improved movement or targeting, so I'll, I'll, I'll say Spock. Okay, locked in with Spock for TMU. Calder. I'm going to go with the M-113 creature, if that's what it's in. I can't honestly remember. <laughs> that's what I'm going to go with. I will accept that as an answer, but survey says... Uh -uh. Zero. Forty. Christopher Pike. Yeah, but, like, who is he, though? I don't like, know. Okay. Dude with a shield. Okay. But not so, Captain America. But, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who it is. It's actually it's a guy cosplaying Captain America. Is nice, who it is. nice. He's got a mace too, though. So. Oh, that's kind of cool. He's got like that old timey weapons thing going on. Sure, yeah. sure. Alrighty, we will move on to figure number two. Calder, give me a number. All right, clickety clack. It is number five. Number five, rarity. It's technically a limited edition figure. Mmm. Mmm. Okay. Okay. I, I am going to let you know that I am basing that off of what it says off of HC Realms next to the rarity uh, thing. Okay. Gotcha. 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 So that can be um, so not con exclusives, limited limited edition. Is that what they're saying? Mm -hmm. It says limited edition next to rarity. Mm -hmm. If you went to advanced mm -hmm. search and you typed in limited edition as the rarity type, this would come up. Okay. Okay. Sure. Sure, Chris. That's okay. <laughs> okay, Chris. So, so what do we have? Maybe like one from edition? like a uh, sorry, uh, like a sets. So, right. Prize each, kit. each set has one, right? It's like the yeah. rocket raccoon for AI. Whatever Spider-Man dude for Earth X. This latest set, Black Panther had Winter Soldier. Um, it could be stuff like that. It could be the monthly OP ones where it's the three figures. So that's like, uh, what's, what was this latest one? It was like Black Panther. So that was like Mbaku, Shuri, Claw. You know. Yeah. But I, mm -hmm. but I feel like the theme is is people named Chris. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> That's where I'm. That's where I'm kind of leaning towards right now. Mmm, is it? <laughs> <laughs> or it's people with the word Pike in their name. That could obviously. Be <laughs> that's so many people. Let me look that up. Pike. <laughs> P uh, All right, there is actually three people with Pike somewhere in their name. One's in Mage Knight, and one's in Halo. So probably not modern age for Bad Samaritan. So never mind. <laughs> okay. 
kills some people with like swords and shields and stuff like that, whatever. So I'm gonna let's just think of a OP kid just to get out of the way. Uh I eight pack. He was part of a three pack. Go with him. That spider guy, I eight pack. Alright, the god, I Apec. Locked in. TM is is the um, we, we just had rotation. Is the um, Guardians of the Galaxy OP? It is. It is not. Okay. That rotated out. Right. So if if this is Chris's pick, it is not. Okay. All right. Uh, I'll say. Uh, let's say Winter Soldier. Okay, locked in for Winter Soldier survey says. <laughs> Number two. All right. Number 20. Number 20 is a free play. What would you guys like to know about this figure? So limited edition is already kind of like saying like set in its own right. Um, so maybe traits could really help us out. And of course, a named keyword could also potentially, there are a lot of adventures, which kind of sucks, but could potentially yeah. narrow it down to like what set it was in. Uh, or not set, but what set of characters it was in. So I, I kind of want to lean towards traits right now. Yeah, so. yeah, that sounds good. All right. Is it name? Oh, hold on. Is it trait or name? Oh, let me look at this real quick. D -d 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 name, uh, name of trait. Okay, so I don't have to actually trait. read what the trait yeah. does. It is just what the name of the trait is. So both of you want to lock that in? Yes? Yep. Yes. All right. The name of the trait is... We will make things right again. Um, hold on. So that means it's Kingdom Come? That sounds yeah. like, yeah. So like that kind of makes me like Power Girl, because she was an LE. Yeah. So make things right again. Kind of makes me think of, yeah, Power Girl. Uh, who else was an LE? I mean, because Hawkman rotated and so did Red Robin. Okay, that was, I was going to ask about that. Yeah. So then, then I think Power Girl. Power was, Girl, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um. What else would be a good one to choose there? So you have two guesses. You totally... There's also... Um, but yeah, it is Ellie, so... There has to be Ellie, so it's not a main set, it's one. So I, I think Power Girl and... Can we think of any others? I, I'm pretty sure it's Kingdom Come. The trait yeah. is... Because uh, I know hmm. there were... Just... Just came out. The Splash Dean Ambrose. Well, those aren't modern eggs legally yet. It's pennies, anyways. Um, yeah. We will make these right again. In this last batch of LEs, was there anything that was even pseudo Kingdom Come? I don't think so. What was for this earlier WKO? What was the prize? Okay, so uh, this is a little bit of an aside, but I do I want to balance the scales every once in a while. Uh, I constantly complain about WizKids not doing things correctly, but I did look it up, and the We Will Make Things Right Again train is actually uh, multi-year. Uh, it has spread itself over a number of figures over the years, and they didn't just let that particular trait die and is on a lot of different figures. So well done, WizKids, on that particular thing for... Keeping it, keeping it uh, standard. Yeah, I, um, I can't like. Uh, I'll sneak the Power Girl one from under you. Oh yeah, yeah, no, yeah. that's fair. That's fair. I can't. Yeah, I we don't want to get one right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't think of anyone else. He's the guest. He gets it, to do whatever it, he wants. It seems, it seems too sure. right. Sure, sure. And now, now I'm blind to any other uh, I just want every listener to know I did say Power Girl <laughs> first. Um, <laughs> uh, he did say Kingdom Come. I, I will give TM that. <laughs> yeah, they, that was a joint <laughs> effort, but we will lock in effort. for uh, TMU, who said Power Girl. Yeah, of course, of course we will. Guess oh. always right. Guess always right. I'm not going to complain. <laughs> <laughs> Call uh, you know, this is right. It's your right. point in spirit. Yeah. <laughs> 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 we're, we're working together. It's okay. As long as Chris doesn't win, that's what really matters. What? No. Yeah, yeah. that's <laughs> no. it. I don't know, I'm just going to go with Hussar, just because I'm like, whatever. Hussar. Hussar. Okay. Hussar. Locked in. That was a terrible answer. I know. 
Was it Power Girl? It was not Power Girl. It was not Power Girl. All right, we'll move on to clue number three. It's number ten, but now my brain hurts. Number ten, name of special power. There are no special powers on this figure. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I make things right. It has to be Kingdom Come. Uh, that is the... Because the, the set of LEDs that came with Power Girl was Captain Cold and Heat Wave. They aren't Kingdom yeah, Come no, no. ever. <sighs> that will make things right, Trade. It could be on someone else. I'm just trying to figure out who else it could be on. Is the... Um, uh, now, uh, this is my... Me, me being not up to speed with the rotation is showing because I'm trying to figure out is the... Um, the bad robots. The that rotated out. Yeah. Yeah. No, it didn't. Wait. No, it didn't. Yeah, it's Captain America. That came out with the same Earth X Captain America. Yeah, I'm a liar. The bad robots did not rotate out. Because, yeah, because that giant man, the tank, and Captain America are all still legal, and that came out with that set of LEs. Huh. So that I is one that. more I didn't think about. Shoot. Hmm. Oh, I didn't ask anyone else. What man is out? Red Robin is out. It's okay, guys. You can give me. You can give me point number two. I don't who mind. Was, who was the LE for Elseworlds? Because I know it was the captain uh, for What If. And I know the Ray was a rare in Elseworlds. Aquaman was a super rare in Elseworlds. Those were two Kingdom Come figures. But I don't know if there's another LE for that set. Let's sit in the room. The alley for Elseworlds. Huh. That's a good question. I'm, I don't think it's a Kingdom Come one, but I, on the other hand, I can't name the figure either, so. Because, like, we will make things right. Like, that wasn't the Mandarin, that wasn't Death's Head, it's not Lockjaw, yeah. it's none of those. It's not Heat Waves, not Iceman. I don't think it's really any of the Imperial Guard. They were just on my mind. That's a terrible guess, but I don't think it's any of them. <laughs> um, this most recent one's not legal yet, these flashes. And then, what was the winter for this year? I'm trying to remember the WKO. On a completely different note, and also while I'm trying to throw you guys off mentally, um, so last episode we were talking about going back and listening to the previous episode where we talked about rules changes. Well, I finally found that episode. It was episode 169, and I went back and started listening to it. Calder and I speak at the speed of snail. Like, I was like, how are we this slow? Like, how do we do <laughs> I was like, uh, whew, that was a little rough. I knew it was going to be rough listening to it, but uh, I sent that to Calder, and Calder's like, yeah, yeah. Oh, we were bad. It was terrible. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> and we also, um, we hit 100 episodes, you and I, together, hit over 100 episodes, which yeah. I really missed. Yeah. Nice. But it was like, Congrats. this this month was our 100-episode uh, mark, and I was like, yeah, but thank you. So That's hopefully nice. that entirely threw you guys off, and now uh, you're just going to guess wrong. Probably already guess wrong, anyways. Yeah. Um, Kingdom Come Bat Robot is my my brain is apparently on a on a one track note right now. I I, I come up with one well, oh, oh, possibility and then I can't think of anything else. Hours. So you're gonna lock it in as the Bat Robot, whatever it's called. Yeah. Okay. Locked in from TMU Calder. Give me a figure. I'm, my brain's broken. I'm so mad. I really don't want to get this point, but like, I don't have a reliable like, guess to go on right now. They're hard. It's really hard. It's really difficult. I hate Christian Bogan. Um, let's see. <laughs> if, you get it wrong, if you get it wrong, I'm going to give like a tertiary point. I'm going to uh, give you guys individual things about it until you guess it right. You're going to be like so mad. That you see, because right. then there's, there's that theme I'm also thinking about, right? And Ooh, person the from Pike, the way we like say this, dude, is it makes me think it's gonna be some like a a person named Chris. Believe it or not, Chris is named Chris. And then <laughs> like whatever, he's got like a thing. I am just I know 
I don't think that said doesn't have no, he doesn't have that trait. I, w- I wanted to say him because he has a mace, you know, like, but that wouldn't work. We ah, we're gonna make things right. Why? Well, you know what? I don't want to just give it up. So I'm gonna get, I'm just gonna go with the Joker. A terrible guess. I'm gonna go with the Joker. All right, locked in with a Joker. Survey says <laughs> that is two points for me, gentlemen, and it is going to be. This is a long, stupid name. WKDP18-008, Orion. Forgot about Orion. Uh. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Came out last year. Forgot about Orion. All right. Yeah. Okay. You were so close, though. You, like, you nailed it in the first clue. Like, oh, he's probably Kingdom Come. I'm like, yeah, well, well, they're going to get this point. And then <laughs> I, I blame Calder. He failed you. It was Calder's fault. I'm sorry. Calder did it? Yeah, it was Calder's yep. fault. It was Calder's yep. fault. All right, we'll move on to <laughs> number three. Number six. Oh, number six. Six is the named keyword. Let me see. Oh, here Let's we see. go. We've got, we've got quite a few. I only need to pick one. Avengers. Mm, you suck. <laughs> I was like, which one is the most generic out of all of these? It's Avengers for sure. Yeah, Avengers is more generic than the generic keywords. This is true. <laughs> There are probably I more Avengers than, than there right. are Warriors. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Sad I've heard online that, like a lot of people are like, they should change the Avengers keyword to a generic keyword. Uh, I'm totally biased. I'm like, no, yes. don't you ever do that. But at the same time, if I'm being honest, yeah, maybe you should. <laughs> All right, throw out some Avengers, gentlemen. Let's throw out some smart Avengers. Ah, gentlemen. So we have, like, Orion looks like some weird Greek loser, right? Like, that's what he looks like. He's got, like, a toga and some, like, leaves in his hair or whatever. So. Yeah. And then Mr. Pike had some old timey, uh, weapons and stuff. So let's kind of think, uh, blast to the pat. And I could be totally steering us in a terribly wrong direction. <laughs> um, but the way my brain is, is working right now is that, is that, that's where it's going. So a modern age Avenger, that kind of seems a little, uh, Maybe a little old school. So, yeah. Hmm. I want to say Battle World, but I know all the Captain Americans in Battle World that would seem old school didn't have the Avengers keyword. Uh, what else was there? I kind of just want to go with Captain Britain. Just because. Just because? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, then we go with Captain Britain. So that'll cover okay. a few. Yeah, Captain Britain. That'll cover one figure. Is the other one not? Yeah, the Earth X one probably doesn't have it. <laughs> oh, wait, there is one in the Earth X. Yeah, oh, you're saying with the Avengers keyword. Yeah, but he might yeah. not have it. I don't know. He doesn't have it. I'm pretty sure. Okay, are you cheating uh, also, 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 No, no, no. <laughs> 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 so, totally not. <laughs> just I'm just staring at my wall, trying to think <laughs> desperately. Uh, and I think the Earth X is King Britain, and he doesn't have Avengers. Oh yeah, I wouldn't even cover that figure. Yeah. He's the same guy, but whatever. Yeah, but it's sort of the same guy. It has to be the same name. Because if if what I'm thinking is right, Chris's yeah. middle name is Orion, so it's Chris Orion Britain is clearly the theme. <laughs> <laughs> it makes perfect sense now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And I know you, for a fact you told me your middle name. Have I? But I, I think so. I just can't remember it. In the worst time possible. Bad Samaritan. Isn't it your, your middle name like Sue or something, right? Yes, I am a boy named Sue. Thank you, Chris. That's <laughs> correct. Okay, right, is, that, also, is that your answer, though? Are you lucky? Yeah, I'm going to go Britain? with King Britain, sure. King Britain, Captain Britain? Captain Britain. Blah. Okay. Avengers. Locked in with uh, Captain Britain. Also, Diego, what's your answer? <laughs> What? What were you going to say? I, was, I need a listener to know that I did go to the rotation page to double check on all the LEs that have rotated out. And, uh, yeah, Ryan's not part of that. He's too new. Woohoo! We I got just, one right on this just, side. I didn't just, mess up. <laughs> yeah. I have totally done that before, in full disclosure. I'll say Black Panther. Just okay. Ooh, it's not a, it's good. Locked in with Black Panther. Survey says... What? Who is it? Which one? Oh, who's, who's right? Who's right? You got it right. 
It is <laughs> it is Captain Britain. Yes! Uh, yes! Nice. Congrats, man. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Connor, you finally figured out the theme. <laughs> So, yes, um, Christopher uh, is my first name. These are all spelled wrong, by the way, compared oh, to my name. Yeah. My, my middle name is actually Ryan, not O'Ryan. Ryan. But there is no Ryan. There is no Ryan that is, uh, if you type it in, there is no Ryan. Uh, let me see what, what actually oh, comes Matthew up. Matthew Red Ryan. Excuse yeah, that is the only the figure <laughs> from the Justice League set with now, Ryan in it. If there so, was a, a Deadpool... Still like whatever like modern age, then he could have done like a like a Ryan Reynolds. I mean, I guess actually, technically there is one that's modern age. Uh, yeah, but uh, whatever. And then Captain Britain, and although that is spelled oh! differently, it's, it's not the Britain I'm from. Uh, saw, that yeah, is from that is Lamella. So you did it. You uh you you <laughs> you got a point. Oh, you prevented me from getting another sweet Calder. Why would you do this? Ah, to hate you, Chris. Ah. And the glory is so much better than getting one right. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, uh, that was Bad Samaritan. <sighs> this is how you know we're professionals when I play bumpers that don't need to be there just so I can get everything set up for the next segments. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's how it actually works in the real world. This is what they don't tell you in the quote-unquote entertainment industry. Whatever. Anyway, uh, this is a really good time to let you guys know that Dial H works off of the value for value model. So if you got some value out of that, you got some entertainment, you can jump onto our Patreon and uh, you can earn your heroic titles like you will hear in the upcoming community section. And also, I totally forgot to mention this earlier, but I should have definitely let you know that Tiemu, who has been mentioned on the podcast only like, oh, I don't know, like a billion times, has his own heroic title and he is actually a vigilante. So. We will move into the Community Tuesdays question, and as always, we put a Community Tuesdays question up every Tuesday on Facebook and on Twitter. This week's Community Tuesdays question was, what is your favorite convention-exclusive hero click ever to have been made? Now, when I thought of this question, I actually thought that there were going to be a lot more choices, but if you look, convention exclusives actually are not that old. It makes it feel like they've been around forever, but they really have not. Uh, there's, there's been like LEs and stuff that weren't exactly convention exclusives, but when you're talking about things that were exclusively sold, uh, there aren't that many of them. They date back a really long time, but they're only like one or two a year for a while. And, uh, it, it led to a lot less of a, a, a fewer choices than what I thought that there was going to be. But, uh, Calder, what is your favorite con LE ever? It's actually a really hard one to choose. Uh, it's got to be the first Connolly I ever was like, I need to get that somehow. I was trying to figure out a way to get it. Was the Captain America Sentinel, which I was very lucky. This is the time they did the con near store, so it was actually really easy to get. Someone just like threw them at me halfway through the tournament. I was like, that's your con exclusive, and he threw another one at someone else. That's your con exclusive. I was like, nice. Nice. Just a good night to, to drive two hours to be here. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, and then it's like, for sure, shout out to that one. The Earth X Captain America was the first con exclusive I ever overpaid for on the internet uh, to get it as soon as it came out. So okay. also a good shout out to that one. So definitely those two. Okay. TMO, what's yours? Uh, I have to go with um, uh, Hulk and Red She-Hulk duo just because I really, really like the sculpt. It's I call it Mr. and Mrs. Hulk. It's really cool. I, okay, so you are not the only person that said that, and I remember when that Con Ellie came out, we were talking about it on the podcast, and I was like, I don't understand why anyone would like this. Can you explain to me why you like this? Is it is it just the sculpt, or is it like, did it, do you have like a personal story with the figure? What worked really well for you one time, or what happened? Uh, to, actually, I don't even own it because we don't really get that many, 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 many con exclusives here in Finland, sad to say. Right. But uh, except for the con in your store stuff, but uh, I just I don't know. It it, it looks it, I don't know. Some for some reason the sculpt just looks really cool to me. I okay. actually I, I looked it up again now when the the community question came up. I was like, I don't not really. Sold on the dial, 
as such, but uh, yeah, it's three hundred oh. points. Yeah. <laughs> Not only that, but it still has the split merge mechanic, which there legitimately at this point there might be players coming in going, "What is that? Don't worry about it. It's not important." Calder didn't know how it worked either. Last time we played together. <laughs> ah, slightly sure. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, there's a reason that split and merge is no longer in this game. Is what I'm saying. Like, it was one of those mechanics. It was just it was convoluted and not really intuitive at all. It didn't really make a lot of sense. And and from a game mechanic standpoint. It probably shouldn't have ever been done the way that they did it. The idea of it is really cool, but in practice it didn't really work. So Also the payoff for it sucked. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, yeah. There's really no, barely any reason to do it, to jump through all the hoops. Yeah, you're very, you're very right about that. They should have at least made it. it. So um, maybe in a way where, you know when, in like comic books or whatever, like you have a he- two heroes and they can be both beaten down, but then the second they go onto the same panel, like this is our team up panel, they get like reinvigorated and then they can fight the world. I think it should have been something along the lines of where if you merge the characters back into one, the action token didn't go with it, and you could then immediately do an action with that duo. But almost no one ever used the split merge mechanic because it was so bad you didn't even want to do it. That's fair. Yeah, yeah. this goes. All right. Well, uh, let's start over on the Facebooks uh, with our first answer. So, Jay Solomon said, torn between Dr. Fate and Power Woman. He's gotten more use out of Power Woman, though, and they managed to make her an amazing support piece in addition to a solid bruiser. By the way, those are good answers. By the way, that reminded me, there was so much DC love this week. They get good uh, consequences, man. I know. They, there's really, really good. I, I forgot to mention mine, by the way. Uh, you think you think it's going to be Marvel, but falling in line with the DC love this week is actually going to be my favorite one probably ever made is the Batmobile. And uh, I think that I will always remember, even though the game was horrible, where I faced you with that Lobo, Calder. Yeah. Just that time yeah. where, like, a running shot in, eject your seat the Batman, punch you in the face, and then battering <laughs> you at the same time. Like, three attacks all at one time. I was like, this is awesome. This is so cool. If I can ever pull that off again, it will certainly solidify why it is my favorite. But that was such a good one turn that I'm like, this thing is amazing. I mean, it's not really amazing, but in my head it's amazing. <laughs> uh, but I'm not the only one that thinks that because Superfan Christian Bogan actually said, since I started playing, it is and probably will forever be the new animated series Batmobile. It's so good looking. Yeah, but like, I killed that Batmobile with the dude the other day, so motorcycle trumps <laughs> car. <laughs> <just saying. laughs> um, he did. He put his hashtags in there. Oh. Was, Super fan, Batman faux life, Superman sucks, and I am the knight. <laughs> I agree with all of those uh, hashtags. They're really nice. Uh, Tyler Murin said, I gotta go with the D20 Doctor Strange. I know he was paired with one of the worst figures ever with Felix Faust, but Doctor Strange wasn't nearly as broken and an honorable mention for the James Gordon Batman mech suit. Really? Someone liked that one? I never read that. You didn't like, what do you mean, the Batman or the Doctor Strange? No, the, the Batman that has Jim Gordon inside. That's a good, it's a good figure. It's a really good figure. Is it, maybe, is it because of the stats, or is it because they had, like, an affinity for the storyline? It's got solid stats, and you can pop out his little Batman. It's really helpful, too. All right. Yeah. Mm. Back to the Twitters, we have Citizen Loyal Miller said, Lockjaw is just so amazing, playable, and good-looking. Yeah, no kidding, it's playable. <laughs> there was a reason it was like $300. You're kind of right there. David J. Gaffney said, I would have to go with Doomsday. The sculpt is great. He's fun to play with. So tough to play against. That seems is a nightmare sitting across the table. He, he's he's a tough cookie to beat. I actually wish the sculpt was bigger. He's not as big as I want him to be, but he's a really solid doomsday. I kind of want to look up that figure uh, here in a second. I will. Uh, I know what you've been thinking. This whole time, I know what you've been thinking. I like turtles. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, oh, I have this one. Where are the turtles? Where are the turtles? Come on, guys. Get out of here. Where are the turtles? Citizen. <laughs> Citizen. Citizen Jedi Legend. Uh, he said, so many, but a very close runner-up is Old Man Logan. But my inner child just yelled, turtle power. And he went to give a gift of the, uh, the, 
the van, man. The van is awesome. Now, is it the greatest thing ever? No, but it's so fun. Have you ever played against it or played with it? I have not, no. The, the, the little pizza power where you spin the, like, little pizza die. or just, I don't know. It's super dumb. There's not a die with it. It's like you roll forward or something. I can't remember. No, there's a dial. There's a dial, right? And you get, like, different toppings for your different pizzas, and it is so hilarious. It doesn't make any sense, but it's super funny. <laughs> Pizza dial. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Jay Sly said, I really wanted a gray gauge for a long time. Not sure why. I don't, yeah, I don't know why. Yeah. <sighs> by the way, that, that Doomsday is 300 points by itself, too. Yes, 300 points by itself. I don't know if I'd, like, totally pay that, but, like, once you see his down dial, like, man, it's nice. No matter how close you are to death, you, you got just hit like a truck, dude. It's great. But he has seven stop clicks, though. Yeah, baby. And That's the so chance dumb. to heal. Oh, That's so it. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to look up that pizza dial here in a minute, but uh, we will go to uh, Super Fan. No, Super... Oh, my God. I suck at this. Uh, superhero, the ruffian, little plastic superheroes, who said, This is a tough one. I played the crap out of Amazo and had a lot of fun, but with the recent power creep, he's not as great as he used to be. I guess right now I would have to go with the new Lobo, and he did link a, uh, a GIF where it's it's Lobo just stomping Superboy from, I think it's that new movie that came out not too long ago. It's pretty cool. It's the main Sweet. man. So you know main what man. Is. Citizen Peter Marshfield said, can I say it's a tie? It's hard to decide since both have only been made once in their unique presentations. Jonah Hex and Spider-Ham. Spider-Ham more so, because I start to sing Spider-Pig when my actions involve him. So that's pretty good. <laughs> Pizza time! That's the name of this trait. Pizza and then there's time. Another, yeah, and there's another trait that's called, what's your favorite topping, dude? Oh, it's so flavorful. It's so good. What, what's your favorite topping of pizza, Chris? Let's just like say, like, besides normal pepperoni, what's your favorite topping? Man, I love I love pizza. I love pizza. I like all kinds of different kinds of things on there. It depends. I'm one of the few people. He doesn't really pizza. love it if he can't pick one. Jamie, what's your favorite topping on pizza? <laughs> uh, mushrooms. There you go. Really? Thank you. I'm gonna be one of those people that actually likes pineapple on pizza. Uh, gross. That was a terrible idea. Canadian bacon. Ranch on the pizza. Canadian <laughs> delicious, Chris. Canadian bacon. All right. <laughs> Citizen Chris Kurtz said, I'm going to go with Spirit of Vengeance Red Hulk. Too bad, no more ultra heavy object beatdowns. Yeah, I mean, you could play with it at your local venue if no one cared. It's a good pick. Or, you know what? If your local venue, this is what I've been doing for years, since they got rid of the ultra heavy and ultra light rules, what they didn't necessarily get rid of is the 3D object packs that you can still find on like eBay or Amazon. Uh, one of the object packs has. A, um, what is it? Not the dumpster. That one's indestructible. It's the Coke machine. The Coke machine, literally in the rules of the Coke machine, says that it does three damage. So it is an ultra heavy that can get around the rules of being an ultra heavy anymore if your venue lets you use 3D objects. There's so, also maybe, the uh, the tank turrets, which is kind of like mm -hmm. sort of a relic or whatever, but it says give it a plus one to close attack damage. But it's a two point object, so it's kind of a bummer. So, there you go. Maybe that will help out there. We have Trent Jordan Morello said the Loki, a pair of them being with, uh, possessed by a Calypso or Brainiac, with two cents on Pandora's box, won me the Pennsylvania Rock State. Nice. That Loki's tough to take down. So, uh, you can't shoot him or whatever. I'm trying to remember. <laughs> He's got something like that. Some cool, like, can't touch this kind of power. Right on, right on. We have a Vigilante Collectible who said, I bought it on eBay, but it's easily the Bat Knight. It's just a shame that such a great generic was only available available to win at cons. Yeah, I 100% agree with you. I didn't even get one for my brother. He's like a collector of the KC, and I, I couldn't get one, let alone like five, which is what you would want. Right. Mm. We had Michael Paris said Gwenpool. Uh, she's never lost when I play her, mostly because she straight up cheats. That's a lot better. Did she really cheat, though? Uh, in a way. Every time you roll a six in any attack roll against, like, anyone, she can take that six and save it for a super senses roll. 
It's pretty awesome. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty legit, though. Oh, and her, her power is, like, pink and white? Yeah, the pink and white. See, she wanted that pink and white clicks. It's pretty sweet. That's super funny. Okay. Uh, Citizen Kirby Ronnie uh, said, for me, it's a toss-up between Casey Power Woman and Spirit of Vengeance Red Hulk. So another another Hulk and the first Power Woman, I think, that we've gotten. Brian Lambert said Galactus. Oh, man. That's Galactus, re- yeah. Is that the, the really old one? The yeah, it would actually be the really the one old one to be a Connolly. Or, I guess, a Zombie Galactus, too, but... Oh, yeah, there is that one. Nah, they probably would have said Zombie Galactus. Yeah. Said zombie Galactus. Okay, well, Abel Alvarado said, For me, it's got to be Con Doomsday! I once used him with the Mistress Death for double damage, equipped with Mjolnir and Prime Red Leader, which has triple perplex, and a Halloween boss battle, big boss battle. Needless to say, my judge was not too happy. That's um, terrifying. <laughs> uh, do, hold, on, hold on, though. So, uh, superhero, super fan, Little Plastic Superhero said, Doomsday can't be targeted with perplex, so I hope you weren't targeting, targeting him with it. Is that yeah. true? Can't yeah, him? you can't target him with perplex because he gets enough stat bonuses and um, stuff from, like, other abilities he does, so you can't target him with perplex. Oh yeah, Doomsday can't be can't use plasticity and can't be the target of Perplex. That it is in his third trait. Yep. So yes, that is correct. All right, on Facebook we have John Carl. Never heard of him. Said Secret Agent Hulk and Red <laughs> She Hulk. You know I love you, man. Uh, but yeah, vote for that uh, that Hulk duo. Why? <laughs> I don't understand. <clears throat> I don't understand. All right. He's got uh, that man call. crush. You know that. He's got that man crush. Um, Not the man crush. I'm. On the Hulk? I don't blame him. Actually, it, in uh, Pokemon Go, his uh, name is Hulk Smash. Exactly. Yeah, something, something like that. So it probably is. That makes – the facts are lining up. That's all I'm saying. Uh, we have Chance McCall. That's Sexy Ranch Hand 2.0. He said, uh, so there was this guy called Faust. He was kind of good. Then you put him with uh, D20 Doctor Strange and Immortal Man, and then Spider-Ham finishes the team. The Converger, the Convengers is a – as a fun team, uh, oh. the con exclusive Avengers. I get it. Uh, by the way, uh, super fan Little Plastic Superhero s- said, "If every Faust mysteriously disappeared, the Heroclix world would be a better place." <laughs> I agree. Kind of a, kind of a <coughs> scumbag team, just saying. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> All right. Uh, Brian Poling said, "Lobo, they finally got the main man right." Dude, he's so good. He is. I hate I hate him, but he is so good. Uh, Simeon, uh, this old man Bruce, I believe. Uh, too, man, too many to choose from. I've used the Earth-X Captain America the most. The old man Logan is my most wanted, though. And some of the newest ones have been so cool, I feel like Phoenix Magneto has to be has to be in the top five now. John uh, Murillo said Superman and Wonder Woman. Oh, that's the first one of those. Yeah. Uh, we have Rex Jungle Cat said, I won a Earth-X Cap at my first WKO. It is one of my all-time favorites. I, I don't blame you at all. It's a sweet sculpt, too. PJ Bowen said Adam Strange. I totally forgot about Adam Strange. I'm not going to lie. That's a figure? Just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> something, something time travel or something like that? Some like time that. travel powers? Uh, or is he just a this, spaceman? I don't know. This, this a spaceman? Space <laughs> He's a time traveler because all of Krypton is based on him being a time traveler. Uh, you just reminded me of uh, the song Scatman. Oh, <laughs> Scat- yeah, heck yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, Matthew Ventura said, Dupe on a motorcycle with a tiger. Can anything be better? I don't know, Calder, can it? Yeah, in fact, it can be our last uh, little answer here. Lance Miller said, Red Robin or Lobo. Clearly, those are better. Mm. Oh, I beat you. Ooh. Except, you know, I'm super biased against <laughs> Dupe, so, obviously. Anyways. I beat you on Twitter this week. Thank you, hashtag Twitter Army, for coming out. I didn't even read uh, TMU's off here, Vigilante TMU's, because his was on here, too, since he already he was already here. But just to rattle through the uh, the rest of these, we have Marcus Zilla said, This year's Magneto, great sculpts, and have always been a Magneto fan. Uh, we also have... Protagonist Ben Jones, one of our men in Australia, said, Old Man Logan was important to get. Enjoyed the story and have used him a bunch of times. The other I really wanted was The Weird, which is also really weird that anyone wanted that thing. <laughs> Just want to put that out there. 
Um, re, uh, read something with him in it and thought he was cool. What did you read with him in it? And I'll see if I can read it, and I may be able to appreciate the character the way you appreciate the character. Um, this year was one of m- – this year, one of my main ones is Ambrose Chase. Need to close out my planetary team. Uh, so there's that. Dennis, Vel- Dennis Dave Velasco said, I would – have to say Plastic Man, since it's one that I've played the most, but Doomsday would be a close second, and can't wait to play Lobo. Uh, he's he's too good not to play. Which which uh, Con Ellie Plastic Man is that? Do you guys know? Oh, he's... Uh, well, here, let me type in Plastic Man. Let's figure it out. Plastic. Zero, no. DP7. Oh, that's going to be the weird arms one. Scratch oh, yeah. his butt, Plastic Man. Okay. <laughs> Scratching his butt. <laughs> you mean you don't want to talk about the 223 Plastic Man from Cosmic Justice that looks like a uh, a mailbox? Mailbox. That's that's clearly the best Plastic Man. That is definitely the best the best Plastic <laughs> Man. That's awesome. So uh, there's that. And then the last answer that I have on Twitter is going to be Danny at the Disco, who said, The Superman-Wonder Woman duo was great. I didn't like the new 52 comic romance, but I loved that sculpt and dial. Yeah, that was... That was pretty sweet. So uh, thank you, everybody, for jumping on to the Community Tuesdays. We had, like, a big turnout this week. I really like that when that uh, happens. Hopefully we can have at least one more huge turnout. I want want the most amount of turnout for this next uh, Community Tuesdays question because it will be the last time that I get to do Community Tuesdays with all y'all. So jump on to this next week's Community Tuesdays question. We haven't figured out what it's going to be yet. But it would be really cool if we just had, like, a bunch of uh, first-time, like, long-time listener, first-time callers. That would be pretty sweet. Be awesome. Um, yeah, would be a lot of fun. Uh, we did have, moving on in the podcast, we had two different birthdays. Now, they're a little late now, uh, but we did have Dean Ferguson, whose birthday was on July the 6th, and which was, that was a super fan, um, Christian Bogan's friend as well as Loyal Wake Hot, which was July 11th, and that was Citizen Loyal Miller's son. So here's a happy Arabian birthday for all y'all involved. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Sexy, sexy. Last uh, thing that I think that we have in the community text community section from my side is going to be Jedi Legends Hero Clicks Tip of the Week. Help you, I can. <laughs> Take you to your destination, I will. All right, Jedi Legends said, Citizen Jedi Legends said, uh, Empower doesn't stack with blades, claws, and fangs. Choose either your damage value, normal damage, with Empower or rolling a D6 and seeing how much damage you deal instead. Choosing uh, Blades, Claws, and Fangs is choosing this damage instead of your normal damage. Thus, Empower can't be included for Blades, Claws, and Fangs. Now, a lot of that's pretty self-explanatory, but we did get a question inside of the, the uh, Jedi Legends uh, tip, and that is from Eric the Red, who said, What about Blades, Claws, and Fangs and Exploit Weakness? Calder, would you like to answer that? What about Blades, Claws, and Fangs and Exploit Weakness? You can clearly use both of those together. You can. You can. You can. Uh, can you, well, yeah, that's... Can that's you empower basic. that? No, you're still using Blade's Claw, so you can't use Empower with it. Mm-hmm. You can use Empower with Exploit Weakness. That's totally cool. That's fine. All right, cool. Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, this got me a few months back. I, uh, I thought I could Empower my Blades. I thought I would get a plus one to the D6. You used to be able to, um, whatever, flex it up. You used to be able to do that. You used to flex up your damage, then you'd roll it, and then you would... You used to be able to replace their damage value, and then you would modify it, and then it would work. It doesn't work that way anymore. Got me. Got me. And that's Jamie, why have, you ever fallen, have you ever fallen victim to this? And this is why you lost. No, you lost because you suck. TMO. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't think I've, I don't think I've ever... Uh, it sounds like, uh, it sounds like uh, this uh, perplexing up your blades... Sounds like something that happened before I started playing the game too, in the olden times. Cause I've never yeah, heard of that. I haven't heard of that either. Either, but uh, to me, it feels like empower is like rolling double sixes, but it is definitely not. So don't conflate those two things. But in my head, I'm like, oh yeah, you should definitely get empower because they're right next to you, and it's like an inspirational boost, and it should totally add one to your blades, claws, and fangs. It doesn't. It just doesn't. So mm-hmm. don't don't fall victim to that, ladies and gentlemen. 
All right. I don't think that I have anything else in the community section. Calder, do you have anything? No, that is all. Uh, we, we're a little bit behind on the home base initiative. So uh, if it has not been claimed and you would like to stake a claim for the Dial H uh, home base initiative, just look at the maps on Twitter and on Facebook and see if you want to stake a claim in your area. You just need uh, the state or the country, whatever, and you just let us know what it is and where it is, and we can take care of that. Uh, there are a couple that are just not on there yet, so hopefully, like, I think Kentucky has been claimed, but it hasn't been updated, so don't claim Kentucky. But other than that, there's there's probably a couple more. Um, thank you very much, TMU, for coming on. We always appreciate you being part of the community and coming on the podcast when you came, man. Yeah, thanks very much. Great to be here again. Of course, of course. Uh, Calder, then I guess if you would like. If that is all, then I will read us out. As a reminder, Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and seal products. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. You'd think I would be better at this than I am, but I'm not. Uh, you can follow us. This guy. At Dial H for Hero Clicks. That is the number four on Twitter. On Facebook, just search Di uh, Dial H for Hero Clicks. And you can send us an email, which we get from time to time. And there was an email this week, which was an amazing email that we got. I did want to read that, and then we will we'll sign off for the night. Now, the first part of this email, uh, I'm, I'm not going to read because it was very. It would just be us like stoking our e our egos. But I'm okay with that. Me. And it, came from, it came from Anthony B. Um, I just want to genuinely say thank you so much for your kind words uh, that you put in this email. Like, it's stuff like that that really kept us going while we've been doing this over the last couple of years or whatever, however long we've been doing this. Really, really cool. But he did have a question inside of the email, so we will definitely answer that. Um, he said, I'm very slowly starting to plan out making a 3D map, and I'm thinking about doing a Joker's Funhouse sort of theme. Maybe have some sort of cool hall of mirrors or maze. If you guys have any other ideas for some Jokerish sideshow attractions, I'd love to hear some input from my favorite two podcasters. Thanks again for being awesome. Uh, yes, absolutely. I had an idea. I'll start this off since I don't think that uh, they probably were not prepared to answer this, so we'll give them a minute. <laughs> I know that there are out there little miniature uh, Ferris wheels that only have like spots for like two or three, you know, like little toys or something in it. But it is possible to modify or maybe create and with what they can do with 3D printers nowadays. I don't see why you couldn't make a like 3D little Ferris wheel where uh, you could put your characters on it. And then it would be like the edge of the Ferris wheel would have the arrow pointing into a slot. And then like every turn, you could turn the Ferris wheel so that <laughs> they would come back around or something. Like say you needed to... Heal a character, right? Like, you you know you need to regen this character. So you run and jump on the Ferris wheel. And then you turn the the Ferris wheel. So basically, they would be immune to close combat attacks, except for maybe, like, uh, leap climb would be a way to get up there. Or giant or colossal or something like that. That would make sense. That would be thematic. Um, and then it would give them a, a moment of breathing room so that they could use regen or something like that while they're riding the Ferris wheel around. I thought that would be a really cool thing to put on there and totally falls in line with, like, a circus uh, or a fair. So that was my idea. Calder, do you have anything? So basically when you think, like, of a Joker-style, like, area, my brain goes to all the Joker Lego sets that were made. So I would go to those for inspiration. There's some pretty great, great ones. Uh, this latest Batman movie has this big Joker castle thing that has a roller coaster uh, go all the way around it, which I think is really cool. I personally would be like, make go-karts. I think that would be freaking awesome. Like, in Hero Clicks wise little go-karts, they all have like the RAM ability, but they can't leave their little area or something would be kind of neat. So that could be something worth looking at uh, for, uh, for that. Also, a booth, like a, um, what would you call it? Like, basically like a cotton candy booth would be really cool. I think that'd be funny. Oh, man, I just went to Google and typed in toy Ferris wheel, and there are a million toy Ferris wheels that could just be modified nice. for for a Heroclix map so easily. 
So uh, that that's definitely a possibility. Tammy, do you have an idea for a Joker esque attraction or theme or ride or something? Uh, nothing with uh, like uh, some kind of cool special rules or anything, but just the visual hit me of like a kind of a tunnel of love. Except it's that the tunnel opening is a huge grinning uh, Joker face. And that, oh, that okay, was, just kind of like an aesthetic thing. Yes, I think that. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah, I think that'll. Cool. Well, please, Anthony B., uh, once you get that 3D everything created and put together the way you want it, make sure you send us a picture of that. We would love to see that. We'll certainly try to retweet that out because that's just awesome. Like, 3D maps are so cool. I forgot to take a picture of one of the ones that was actually at Origins because they were playing on it when I walked by, and I was like, I don't want to be that weird dude that was like, hey, can I interrupt your game so I can take a picture <laughs> of this? That'd be creepy, so I don't want to do that. But uh, it would be really cool if you could do that for us. So, all right, now I don't have anything else. You guys good? I'm good. All right, bye, guys. Happy trails. See ya.